We move to question number six. Grant Robertson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. Does he stand by his statement that, quote, I'd expect the financial system to take account of the inherent risk of rapidly rising house prices, particularly the buyers? The buyers need to pay attention to the fact that interest rates will inevitably rise, even if in the next couple of years they can't see that happening quickly. The debt related to mortgages lasts a long time. Mr Speaker. Ah, the Honourable Paula Mr Manor. Speaker, on behalf of the Minister, yes. As I said in that interview, mortgages do last a long time, and buyers who are stretching themselves when mortgage rates are the lowest in 50 years just need to understand the risk or the pressure they'll be under if and when mortgage rates come up. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Now that he has acknowledged the housing bubble, would it be less risky for home buyers if if the government had launched a government-backed building programme for affordable housing, as recommended last week by the Employers and Manufacturers Association and the Property Institute. Uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Paula Bennett. Mr Speaker, I don't believe that, uh, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, um, what the Minister is merely saying is that actually we have mortgage rates that are incredibly low. What a lot of households look at when they are borrowing is their capacity to pay that mortgage and less about how much they're actually borrowing as such. And what he's concerned about, of course, is that as those mortgage rates go up, there may be some concern about their ability to pay it back. And that is the point that he was making. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Uh, supplementary question. Grant Robertson. Which of the following government contributions has added the most to the housing bubble? A. Allowing building consent levels to sit at record lows for four years and still refusing to build affordable homes at scale. B. Repealing laws to promote affordable housing. C. Refusing to put in place restrictions on offshore speculators, D, encouraging first-home buyers to buy the houses they cannot afford through deposit subsidies, or E, all of the above. Yeah. The Honourable Paula Bennett. <laughs> well, Mr Speaker, those sound like Labor policies that were rejected by the, uh, by the public, but what I will say is that we're doing a heck of a lot around housing in New Zealand, and we can see that, that we're building at least 40 houses every working day in Auckland, which, of course, is four times what it was when we came into office. We can see the detail in what is going on, the current situation of really of years of neglect that has happened um, by a combination of the people, but that progress is definitely being made. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Uh, supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Is his advice for first home buyers on the risk of the housing bubble bursting after eight years in government finally an admission of the complete failure of this government's housing policy. Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Paula well, Bennett. Mr Speaker, I think that um, first home buyers understand better than the member does that there is some risk when mortgage rates are as low as they are and they are lending to capacity and their ability to pay it back, that they will be taking into consideration um, their ability if those mortgage rates do go up. Question number seven.